Hello and welcome to day 35 of Fun with Cheese. Today's episode is entitled, And a One, and a Two, and a Whole We Go. Yes, that's right. We'll be talking about the different types of milk that you might find in your dairy case and how to identify them. Oh, and we forgot the skim. And what their actual contents are and some of those questions there. And we'll even have a little mystery as to where some of the flavors of milk came from at the very end. Um, today's friends of the show, I'm only wearing this today. We're not doing a hat, uh, anything special. This is my normal blue hat that I wore for the first 10 episodes. Uh, but as I was putting this together, my reminder came across tonight that um, we were supposed to be starting our FFA banquet. And uh, Auburn LFA was founded in 1937, which makes this our 83rd year of FFA membership. And I've been there since 2000, so this would have been my 20th FFA banquet. And uh, my shout outs go to my officers, uh, my president, as John would say, uh, Logan. Um, I know this is going to be a big night for you, and we're going to find a way. Don't worry. Um, as for your retiring address, and um, we all look up to you, and for our membership, they look up to you because you always looked out for them. So um, this one's for all of you guys, our FA officers and our FA members here at Auburndale, and the rest of you across the state and across the nation who uh, weren't able to have your spring banquets. But we're finding cool things to do and um, great things to do uh, in the absence of ourselves from our schools and. Those things will come, don't you worry. So, tonight, we're going to talk about milk. Yes, I know we're not talking about cheese, but we're talking about milk. And when you go to your dairy case, you're going to find an ample supply of milk. We've talked about the date codes from where they came from. We've talked about some of the things as far as when the milk comes in. We've talked about the milk haulers that transport it from the farm to the dairy plant before it gets things rolling. Um, and this one's for you, Taylor, because you asked about it and you asked me to talk about a cow. And there are some cows out there that uh, give more milk fat than others, and milk fat is that thing that we make butter for. In fact, I have 160 pounds of butter in the back of my van now for our dairy drive. I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, that came from Grassland, 55304, if you remember that one. Um, I have, uh, we've had whipping cream. Uh, tonight we would have been making or eating lots and lots of cheesecake and drinking lots and lots of chocolate milk. Uh, but that butter fat is something that sits milks away are apart from each other and so the first one our first guest tonight is um, whole milk okay these are the new Weber's bags that I was gifted I didn't have to buy any milk tonight beyond my normal milk that I have but they gifted me the bags and uh, this is their new design but this helps out in their bagging process they don't bottle gallons of milk there they bag them in the half gallons so I want you to pay attention to the colors here the red the red corresponds to whole milk three and a half percent milk fat if we had a jersey, a jersey would be somewhere in the neighborhood of four, four and a half, almost 5% butter fat. And so what they have to do with that is we standardize the milk. At whole, we're at three and a half percent fat. So they're gonna pull that milk fat off. So they might be pulling a half, one and a half percent of that fat off and they're gonna make that into that whipping cream or pr provide those for other things for making butter and things like that. Three and a half percent butter fat. Uh, it's gonna have eight grams of fat per one cup serving, and it's also gonna have eight grams of protein per one cup serving. Now, it's not gonna matter what milk we have, there's always gonna be eight grams of protein per one cup serving of milk, whether we're going down to skim or we're at whole. The fat's gonna change a little bit, but that's a good fat though. It's a good saturated fat, and you think of yourself as a growing individual. Um, your milk might change over time as far as what you are uh, drinking, uh, maybe you're getting older and you're not growing anymore, but for your kids, this is the best source of fat that they can potentially get, and we mix it into so many different things. 3.5% fat, um, and we call it whole, always going to have a red cap when we're looking at the dairy case. Now, there's a couple things I wanted to point out. That one, that this is farmer certified from our cows that were not treated with BST. Now, BST was a hormone that uh, was synthetically made that naturally occurs within the cow, but if you look at a cow, it was a management tool. And so if you look at a cow's milk production, it would go up and down and up and down and up and down. You moms out there, whoever um, were able to nurse your kids, you know how that production went up and down and you had a lot of problems up here, pardon the pun, 
but for our dairy cows it's the same way and so what BST did was help level off that production so it wasn't such an up-down and they were able then to as they got farther in the lactation they would drift off into their production but this took a lot of that out of there uh, nothing wrong with it there was nothing that showed that our BST was different than the normal BST but they just chose not to put it in there and so there is no BST no added hormone in your milk please don't think that nobody's gonna try and hurt you or harm you okay it's all good um, our next milk friend of the show is coming in and his name is 2% so 2% is always going to be blue okay some sort of blue cap and that blue cap depending on manufacturer you'll see it might be light blue it might be a dark blue whatever but it's going to be blue and it's going to have 2% fat so one and a half times or one and a half percent less fat than the other one there's eight grams of protein and five grams of fat in that 2% serving, one cup serving of milk. One else in here, this is the label that you see, probably made in Wisconsin. Uh, this is from the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin, used to be Milk Marketing Board, but you look on this and this is our claim to fame. You'll find this on cheeses, on milks, and all dairy products that you find out there. Um, A2 protein only, uh, but there's no significant difference there if you're wondering, okay? 2% milk, blue cap. Then we come down to our little friend, 1%. Now, 1% we're dropping a percentage of milk, uh, one percentage fat less than 2%, go figure. So we're at 1%. What's happening to the flavor? That fat provides flavor, the more fat we put in there. So it's becoming a little less watery, but once again, eight grams of protein, uh, two and a half grams of fat in one serving, 1% milk. We're gonna have a, a, a yellow label on that milk. You're looking for a yellow cap. Uh, this one happens to be from Weber's Farm Store. Tells you what type of milk it is. Uh, there are other labeling here. They come in a one gallon container here and produce under the highest possible standards. That's a standard um, decree that they put on there. What they want the farmer to know. And please understand, every farmer that I know of wants nothing more from the best care of their animals. Whether you're organic, whether you're conventional, whether you graze, whether you do a TMR, everybody is looking out for their animals and looking out to provide the best possible product for you. We get to our friend Pink, okay? Pink is going to be skim milk, no fat, okay? There is no fat in it, and there are still eight grams of protein in there. Good for building strong muscles and bones. This milk has been fortified with vitamins A and D, which is also helps with calcium in bone formation and muscle structure. So for growing bodies, it's a really good thing. Skim milk, pink, no fat. Those are the four. Now, Mrs. Hardinger, your question was, geez, could you think you could find out where the origins of flavored milk came from? No, Taylor, chocolate milk does not come from brown cows. Chocolate milk comes from you got to be kidding me, man. Yes, chocolate milk gets its origins from Jamaica, man. Chocolate milk. Weber's bag, okay? This is what the inside of the bag looks like. Different than your container, I know you're saying. Different than Quick Trip. They um, package right here in Marshfield, Wisconsin. It is a clear bag. Different than the Quick Trip bags because they travel from La Crosse to wherever they have to go. Bags are a little bit thicker and need to be a little more durable in the gas stations. But... This is a 2% chocolate that was originally came from Jamaica because they would take their cows and then they'd put cocoa beans in there, shake it up, and guess what? When the explorers came from England and places farther to the east, they saw it, they tried it, and said, you know what, this is a good flavor. I'm taking it back with me. So they took it back with them and called it their own. So they said that they invented chocolate milk when originally, if you think about it, cocoa beans, Central America, Jamaica, in the tropics there, that's where this stuff grows and that's where they got it from. Last thing I'm going to show you here. Don't be intimidated by these bags. You don't, and I see a lot of mistakes here. People come along and they'll cut way back here, okay? All you have to do is take the tip, snip off just that much is all you have to have, and you have a portable spout, half gallon at a time, and it's one of the most delicious things you can do. My favorite is the Weber's Cafe Mocha where you dump this into coffee and you have your own cafe mocha. It's better than Starbucks and it's local. And I get it from my coffee maker. So there you have it. The four types of milk, their labels, their caps, what do they stand for? 
origins of chocolate milk and where it came from and how they cut the tip off these crazy bags if you've never had them before. It's an awesome way, plus they smush down very small and take up very little space in the landfills. Remember, I don't have a cheese, but this is where milk starts out with and it wants to become cheese and become immortal. So you guys stay classy. We'll see you for day 36.